Hey everyone, welcome to the Life is Strange 2 spoiler cast. It's been a minute, but we had to recover from the trauma. My name's Mari. And I'm Stacy. What did you think of Life is Strange 2, the ending and everything? This is a spoiler cast, so don't yell at us. So, yeah, we'll be talking about spoilers for the whole thing, also multiple endings. We went and watched all the endings afterwards. So, <clears throat> I really liked this game liked this game and I'm like I feel like people like some people like really paid attention to it and loved it and it makes me sad that like more people didn't really like latch on to it I'm sad that <clears throat> people didn't give it a chance and there's a lot of different reasons for it and I know that nobody's obligated to do it but if you're resistant to it because it's boys instead of girls you're wrong and that's all I have to say about that but I understand that if you are hesitant that it's about boys, I, Sean is a really relatable person. Yeah. Gender, gender or otherwise, even though I understand if you really feel strongly about having a boy in your game or whatever, even if you feel that way, because usually I'm like, oh, this is a male protagonist, it's harder for me to latch on to them. Mm -hmm. I had a really easy time latching on to Sean and Daniel. Um, and I, well, and I also feel like, you know, one of the things that we have talked about before is that sometimes male protagonists, they make them kind of a blank slate so that the player can kind of, like, put themselves onto the character. Mm -hmm. And Sean is not like that. Sean has, like, a distinct personality. Mm -hmm. He has things that he's going through. You get to know him, um, pretty much, like, from, right from the very beginning. I didn't, I felt like he was a character. I didn't feel like he was just, like, a foil a for the slate. for the player, mm -hmm. you know, um, and I feel like also because of that, when you have games that have characters that are very distinct, then you're getting the story that the developers want to tell, as opposed to just like the story is what you make it, you know, mm -hmm. which can. One thing I really liked about it is that the main character doesn't have the magical powers. It's someone outside of yourself. So then the main focus of the game is trying to raise somebody to have the right set of values and morals so that they hurt the least amount of people. I don't think that's actually... I but, disagree. No, that's what you think it is. But really the moral of the game is, fuck the police, run to Mexico. Because... Yeah, the first you're thinking, how can I be a, like a good person? How do I teach Daniel to be a good person? But at the same time, the real message was, society is unfair, and sometimes, no matter how hard you try to be a good person, they're still gonna paint you as a as a bad guy. And sometimes, in order to survive, you have to be the bad guy that society is trying to make you be, and just to like survive. Yeah, I definitely. So, I feel like, especially in the early episodes, mm -hmm. we felt like, oh, we have to do everything right, because much like the original Life is Strange, you're feeling like, oh, if I just do the right things, then I'll get the best outcome, and that's kind of like, you, you know. I knew that they were going to screw me over. I knew they were. And I just thought to myself, well, I'll have to be the best big brother I can to Daniel and make sure that he never abuses his power. Turns out... Definitely abuse your power because even in this concept of Daniel having superpowers within our society today, a kid like him having superpowers is still not strong enough to keep him safe anyway. Like even if you have superpowers, if you're <clears throat> underprivileged or mistreated by society, it doesn't matter. You can yeah. still like get fucked. And I felt like you know, there's a couple situations that you are put in um, as the as Sean where you're thinking to yourself, like, oh, I just have to, like, you know, choose the best things to get the best outcome. And I felt like the game was really good at showing you that, like, oh, yeah. Like, it, w it was, it didn't, like, punish you because I feel like the original game sometimes they like, tried to be like oh like you're metagaming you're trying to get the best outcome well here's a curveball mm -hmm. this was actually just no matter what you choose you are going to get screwed over because mm -hmm. sometimes that's just the way it goes yeah at first I was sad but then I realized okay but realistically this is what would happen 
if you try to do these things like trying to talk to the police well the police have no interest in trying to figure out what's going on and it's just it's sad I really now I'm looking at I'm looking at this footage of the first episode being like damn it it went so far like it comes out the other end I know 30 years older no matter what ending, even the one where he goes to jail versus the one where it's just a few years later, like, he's just, like, <gasps> Yeah, I mean, did we want to talk about the endings? Because I, I feel like it would, because we have since watched all the endings, mm -hmm. so we know what happens in each one of them. Um, we obviously, so we watched, we played two when we originally played this through, but because you kind of have to make choices throughout the game to influence your ending, we couldn't reasonably go back and replay the entire game mm -hmm. just to get the other two endings. Um, so the endings that we saw are the one were the ones where um, what they both get captured. The the one where they surrender together. Yeah, they surrender together. And then the second one where Sean goes to Mexico. Sean goes to Mexico and Daniel stays behind. And Daniel stays behind and Sean goes to Mexico is slightly better because he has. He doesn't spend 15 years in jail for something he didn't do in order to protect his brother. And it's just... The first one wrecked me because even though it sucked, I knew that in the real world, if magic powers happened, I that's how it would be. It, he would... Someone would have to go down. Like, they would have to have someone to blame for all those things. Even though... In the first Life is Strange, all the shitty things that happen really are Max's fault. <laughs> but in the second one, I liked the fact that all that shit really wasn't his fault. He was just trying to clean up a mess that just kept happening. Mm -hmm. And because of his place in society, it he couldn't defend himself. He didn't have anyone to advocate for him. Even his mom, she's just like some one living off the grid. No one's going to really... Do I mean, whatever. I don't know her. if everything was Max's fault, though. A lot of... Well, okay. Max, Mr. Jefferson Mr. Murdered. Jefferson existed. No, but I'm talking about the storm coming in to, like, blow everything away and all this stuff. It was... The first one's theme was trying to make everything perfect. Even if you have superpowers, you can't make everything perfect. You can't have a perfect life. The second one is, even if you have superpowers, you can't defend yourself against an unfair society. Hmm. So I tweeted about that a while ago, just, like, talking about my thoughts. And the game director was like, you're absolutely right. And I was like, fuck yeah. I always feel so good when people do that. Um, but it, And one of the things that I thought was interesting between Life is Strange 1 and Life is Strange 2 is if Max was found defending herself against Mr. Jefferson. Yeah, it was a situation where people were like, okay, what are you talking about? But as soon as Max is seen trying to defend herself against Mr. Jefferson, I was like, oh, we believe you, Max. Mm. But in Life is Strange 2, it didn't matter what happened to Sean. People just automatically considered him guilty. Like, he wasn't seen as being allowed to defend himself. Because sometimes when you're a person of color, you can't defend yourself. Sometimes the best thing to do is to not do anything. Because if you do anything, people are just automatically going to shoot you. Like, in the first confrontation of the game they didn't do anything they didn't do anything wrong and Esteban gets shot even though nothing bad like you push a kid like that's what teenagers do they get in fights they shouldn't don't get in fights but sometimes it happens yeah I felt that I yeah I mean I agree definitely with that assessment of this second game um and like i think the way that the first one differed is kind of like it starts out with this injustice that you think you're gonna fix it and so does this one it starts out with an injustice but you're not trying to fix it you're trying to just survive it mm -hmm. which is like the main difference to me between these two protagonists is like max is able to go on the offensive mm -hmm. and be like i need to figure out what happened I need to like save people mm -hmm. and ends up screwing up a lot of stuff along the way. Whereas Sean and Daniel, they're not even trying to fix anything. They're honestly just trying not to like 
go to jail, get separated, get killed somewhere along this whole thing. And what makes it so like affecting to me is that the whole time I mean even even though there's it's like there's strong indications that like things are not going to work out mm -hmm. we st I still really like wanted that like mm -hmm. the whole time you mm -hmm. know like I wanted there to be an ending where like everything was okay and there isn't and sometimes like that's just the way it is yeah I, another big thing is that Max and Chloe, even though they had their own struggles as queer girls, they had safe places to go to. They had safe spaces. They had places where they could recoup and feel safe. Mm -hmm. Like the junkyard, Chloe's house, the dorms, places like that. And then they would go into the dangerous place. Mm -hmm. And Max always had the ability to protect herself in some way, except for in the end. Um, but... Sean and Daniel, they had a safe space in the beginning, and then never again. It's, yeah, they and never it's, felt safe and, ever again. And you know what, too, is it's kind of like ripped away from you, mm -hmm. like very abruptly. And mm -hmm. then, um, you know, there were some people I think at the beginning that were wondering why um, these episodes in Life is Strange Two took longer to come out than the ones for the original game. Um, and I think part of that is because it's completely new environments and characters for every single episode, mm -hmm. whereas in Life is Strange 1, it's all kind of centering around, like, mostly the same areas, mostly the same characters, so you're not, like... Yeah, they reuse a lot of areas. Which isn't bad. No, it's, it's not just, bad. It's just kind of, like, it's... It, but it leads to a very different feel, because in Life is Strange 2, you're constantly on the run, you never know where the episodes are going to go. Um, even the curveballs that you're thrown in the original game, you're still at least kind of working in the framework of, yeah, but they're in this town trying to figure out what's happening. Also, I do think that a big difference between the two games is that um, the first one almost has that, like, Twin Peaks, like, hinging on, like, a mystery. Mm -hmm. We're trying to solve a murder. Mm -hmm. where There's puzzles. Um, whereas the second one... Um, it's more about character development, mm -hmm. which is interesting because I think that a lot of people are always saying, let's get that really character story driven game. Mm -hmm. And then inevitably there were people in this one that said, where are the puzzles? <laughs> you know, like where's the, where are the puzzles in gameplay? And it's like, well, that's actually not what this is about, but what makes it, so effective is that you really feel responsible for Daniel because mm -hmm. you're making so many decisions on his behalf. You're telling him to do things. I feel like... Even just him watching you, you know? And yeah, and I don't know what the experience is like for somebody who's not an older sibling. I am an older sibling, and... I definitely felt like that spoke a little bit to my experience of it. I'm not, I was obviously, I wasn't a parent to my siblings, but there was definitely that feeling that I remember from when my brother and I were like really young that it was like he really like looked up to me and like wanted to be around me all yeah. the time. Um, and they paid a lot of attention to what you do and how you treat other people. So it's like, even if it's not something that you're directly telling Daniel, he's still picking up on cues from how y what you're doing, mm -hmm. um, which is what can lead him to be a little... Yeah, what, they, what they had a really interesting system with that in that you never directly controlled what Daniel did, so it always felt like, uh, like it was out of control. But they had a system where you could build up points towards different things. So if you... The, brat, inf the brat o meter. Yeah, the brat o meter, <laughs> where you could teach it. I think there was, like, several different ways you could do it that were at the same time, which is him respecting the law more or him respecting the bond between brothers more. Mm -hmm. And then there was the brat o meter, too. And Which you, is basically whether he's going to listen to what you tell him or not. 
And then there's also if he's going to do bad boy stuff or be good boy. It's like two different systems. And it always added up. So whenever he was acting like a little brat or like he was going to do something outside of your control, it was because of your decisions earlier in that episode and in previous episodes that added up to how he experienced the world, which I think is a really interesting way of showing like this is what it's like to like raise somebody who looks up to you and is you are their eyes to how to act. Because mm -hmm. a kid basically is a blank slate in a lot of different ways, barring a neurological lot of things. things and stuff. So it's... I thought that was a pretty interesting way of showing how to tell someone to, like, this is what it's like to raise someone. Because a lot of games do the adopting a child scenario, mm -hmm. but they make it so it's a lot more direct about what you want them to become, or you have no choice in how they change. Like in um, The Walking Dead Season 1, Clementine is a pretty defined person, and in The Last of Us, Ellie is a pretty defined person. Well, you don't get to any choices in The Last of Us that will affect Ellie, too. Yeah, you think you do, but you don't. Um, so I think it was interesting to show the actual cultivating of a person and what they will become. Yeah, um... I did also find it kind of funny how some people were like, oh, like, Daniel's such, like, a little brat. Like, he doesn't do what I tell him to do and, like, blah, all this well, stuff. Well, that's your fault. And I'm like, and I'm sitting there and I'm like, in the real world where it's not based on a point system, you might have a little bit more leeway because kids are unpredictable. But this is a game and we're working within like defined systems of like what leads up to his behavior mm -hmm. so you literally have no one to blame but yourself <laughs> <laughs> if he's acting like a little turd that's on you bro that's on you um, uh, not that we're saying I he don't still know. acts like a little turd sometimes you know matter what but i think but that's realistic net i also think it's interesting that both of us are really hesitant about having children like Personally, you, I, you're hesitant. I'm completely against it. Yeah, I, for me, having children, I'm like, in my mind, I'm like, that is a huge responsibility. And also, kids are kind of annoying, but not annoying to the point where I hate them. But mm -hmm. I accept that they are a big responsibility. They're going to be annoying. They're going to get on my nerves. And for some reason, that makes me a lot more patient with kids than people who are like, I love kids. They're perfect. Why is the child not behaving? Why like, isn't it being perfect? Yeah. Like, I want to believe from all the things that my parents told me. Yeah. No, yeah, I totally, I think you and I, since we already expect children to be... Terrible. Terrible and annoying, we're like, oh, it's, they're being terrible and annoying. Okay. Kel Supreme's. Yeah, so, <laughs> I don't know what that means, but yes. <laughs> I mean, like, what a surprise. Yeah, and... So when Daniel acts up and stuff, I go, oh, okay, Daniel's acting up. What can I do to fix this? Because that's what children do. Mm -hmm. And I think it's, I liked that he was a little agent of chaos because that's what kids are. In other games, that people expect nine-year-olds, like Clementine from The Walking to Dead. To be able to, like, fucking stab people. Or 14-year-olds, like Ellie from The Last of Us. To act like adults. And I also notice this in movies where people get annoyed at child actors and stuff. Mm -hmm. For doing a good job acting like a child. Because for some reason, when people watch movies or TV shows or video games, when a child is literally acting like how a child acts, they say that like this is like an unrealistic character. And I'm like, have you been around a child? I don't know that they think it's unrealistic. I think that they... I think that people underestimate or overestimate their own, like, patience with children. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like, so, and, you know, it's partly a media thing, too, because most media, you, you know, even, like, Katniss. How old's Katniss? Like, was 17 or mm -hmm. 18 or something? And the other kids in the Hunger Games are as young as, like, 14 or 12 or whatever. Mm -hmm. And yet they're, like, completely self-sufficient. They're, like, running around murdering people. And, like, 
it's all fine. And granted, the Hunger Games is an extreme example, but, like, then when you have a teen girl who is, like, you know, emotional and upset and whatever, and people will be like, oh, she's, like, so unreasonable. And I'm like, that's literally, like... That's what it. it is. That's what it is, though. Being a child, like, maybe it's because I'm extremely immature, but I remember being a kid <laughs> and being, like, not under... I think people forget, like, even though teenagers, you know, they're a little, you know, whatever. Granted, we probably have teenagers listening to this right And I now. just want you all out there to be, like... <sighs> I hate it when people are like, oh, the things teenagers go through are so trivial. It is not trivial at no. all. Because, first of all, all teenagers are experiencing everything for the first time. So they don't have the experience to be able to handle anything maturely. Like, yes, you can. Of course, you guys let's, are smart. Let's be but, real, though. There's even some people in their 20s, 30s, and beyond who still never figured out how to handle their shit. So, yeah, like, me. Hello. But, like, I just, it's so, more people just expect teenagers and, you know, people Daniel's age to know how to act. And, like, how are they supposed to know how to act if no one's ever taught, like, what? That's like expecting someone well, to know chemistry when they've never even taken biology. But I think that there's also something to be said for the fact that, like, at least the way I remember it from when I was, like, growing up is that whatever whatever life stage I got to, the people immediately below me, immediately younger than me, became incredibly annoying. You know mm -hmm. why? Because they're a reminder of how you were mm -hmm. at that age. Mm -hmm. And you're just like, oh, my God. <laughs> so, and I'm like, so, like, you're 16, and you're looking at a 13-year-old, and you're being like, they're the most annoying person ever. And perfectly enough, I had a brother who was four years younger than me, so he was always the most annoying little shit mm -hmm. ever. Mm -hmm. Um... And I think that some people kind of, like, carry that with them into their adult life where they're just, or, I don't know. I think the, the root of it that bothers me is that all these people who say they want kids don't understand that children are annoying. And, like, you have to accept that, that kids are going to be annoying. I don't know. I, but that was a whole side tangent. Yeah. In, anyway, but I guess the whole thing comes from Life is Strange 1 and Life is Strange 2. We're like, people don't talk like that. That's not how... I'm like, yes, you do. Yes, um, you do. <laughs> on fleek. Yeet. Yeah. Like, uh, have you guys heard yourselves? Like, yeah. I, I've... <laughs> and, and I'm not saying it's bad. No. Like, I'm into it. It's not cool. Not saying it's bad. So... You, this is like a definitely, definitely, definitely a side point. But um, when I was at work the other day, my boss was asking us to include. She, she was like, "Oh, like we're putting together this thing." Like she was like, she was like, you know, to make it like more relatable. Is there any millennial slang that we should be using, incorporating? <laughs> wait, just wait. Okay, so I'm like, I'm like, I don't know about that. And I was like, okay, well, you know what? I'm just gonna look up an article of like slang terms just to see if there's anything in here that I could potentially use. I'm reading through all of them and I'm like, I know what these all mean and wow do these look fucking stupid when I'm reading through this list <laughs> trying to like think about explaining them to my boss. <laughs> Cause yeah, we it slang is inherently stupid. You know what I thought was interesting is that a lot of the characters that you meet are outside of the internet meme culture so they use a lot less slang so like Cassidy and Finn mm -hmm. and all because they don't have as much access to the internet mm -hmm. they don't use cell phones as much so I thought that was pretty interesting on top of the fact that they probably avoided using slang because of the backlash from Life is Strange well, 2 one I think that another reason to not use uh, to not use as much slang or at least not like quote unquote like cutting edge slang you can use like older stuff because people use that ironically mm -hmm. but like with with the anything that's on like the cusp of newness it makes some, like it would make the game feel dated mm -hmm. pretty immediately mm -hmm. which is probably the reaction that most people have because by the time something comes out people are just like oh that was a word from like you know a year or two ago mm -hmm. not right now but 
yeah, I liked that about this, that it was kind of more... I don't know. I really felt like this game had a lot of universal feelings to it, even though some people seem to just really look surface level and say like, oh, but I'm not a Latinx person or I'm not Mexican American or like, how am I going to under, I'm not, you know, I'm, how am I going to understand this if I'm not this? And Wait, I, uh, bleh, bleh. <laughs> yeah, That's all I have to say is shut up. Well, uh, you can't, what, you're able to play the Witcher and you can't relate to this? Come on. Yeah. That is, come on. Well, I what? Th in my in my opinion, I think that that is an excuse that, I think that's an excuse that people, um, that they trot out when they don't want to give something a chance, but they want their, they want it to sound like there's some sort of well thought out intelligent reason. Do you know what I mean? But really, you're an idiot. But really, <laughs> they're, because I feel like a a game that is written well or a book or a movie whatever if it is written well there will be universal themes in it throughout despite you having major differences with any of the characters you know we're all I'm gonna people be real. sometimes i don't want to play games simply because it's about a bro dude and i'm just gonna say it's probably just because i just don't want to and that's okay and if that's your reason fine but it's there. It's not deeper than that. Yeah, yeah. But you just, but you just come out and say like, I just, you know. And I think that's what frustrates me sometimes when people say like, oh, you know, I don't want to play a game because the, the main character is a lesbian because I just can't relate. And I'm like, really? You can't relate to love? You can't relate to having a crush on somebody? Gay like, people watch straight shit all the time. They survive. Yeah. They live. Yeah. And they can still find it romantic. Mm -hmm. You know, or like. Yeah, I just, I feel like if you just don't want to play something because it just doesn't interest you, that's it. Mm -hmm. You can just say that. That's fine. Mm -hmm. You know? You might not want to, some people don't like fantasy games. Some people don't like sci-fi shit. Like, you I know? Think a, I think the topics of Life is Strange made people feel stressed out because, I don't know what it is, but I think, I think, uh... It makes people uncomfortable to realize that certain things are happening. Yeah. And, you know, at the same time, I understand when you come home after a long day, you just want to tune out, and that's okay. If that's your reason, fine. You just want to tune out and play a game about girls being murdered and teenagers yeah, trying to solve it. If you want to just relax and watch a game about a, a teenage girl being murdered because it's been normalized in media to the point where you feel nothing about it because every single show is about a serial killer who targets women to kill. Um, yeah. Yeah, you can totally chill out because you no longer have feelings about the fact that women are often the targets of serial killers. And that's fine. If you want to think about it, fine. But if you also don't want to tune out and t talk about a game, something, an experience that happens to a lot of people in this country, then play Life is Strange mm -hmm. too. And I'm not going to lie, I, am, I would definitely consider myself to be one of those people who is desensitized. Mm -hmm. To, like, women being murdered. Oh, yeah, I am, too. That's why I... I, I yeah, because I, I don't want people to think that, like, we're saying, like, oh, you're so desensitized, it's bad. Like, no, no I'm definitely I was, one of those people. No, because I, I notice, like, every time I watch a show, I'm like, it's always a, a girl being murdered, huh? Like, mm -hmm. it's always... Except for Broadchurch. That was the only one where a little boy got murdered. Well, so I, uh, I read a lot of, like, thriller novels and, like, mm -hmm. mysteries and, like, a lot of crime novels... And, yeah, like, 99% of them, it's a woman, women's, women, women and children. And then like, a male detective trying to figure out who killed this girl. Who killed the women's. Who killed the women and how. <laughs> I, okay, think about it, though. Usually when it's something else, it's like, ooh, that's the twist. The twist is the detective is a woman. Whoa! <laughs> or the twist is, oh, it's not a girl who got murdered this time, it was a guy. And you're like, whoa, this isn't that and then new? It, and, then it, and then it turns out that it was, like, a gay guy, because they're like, well, yeah. yeah. 
It, 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 it turns out, oh, it was actually a gay guy who did it because he was gay. And I'm like, what? Why would you? That's like, why can't it just yeah. be normal? Like, what do you, why would you say that? Like. Uh, um, so, yeah. So I don't want people, I don't want, I don't want anyone to think that like, if, if, if this is the type of, if these are the type of themes that are like, if you go to games for escapism and that would stress you out because it's not something, because honestly, like, these... Or it's a transphobic situation. Sorry, just to yeah. put that out there. But I was going to say, like, because I think this game covers themes like racism that we don't often see in games in quite this way, mm -hmm. um, especially not like directed towards the player there's a, sometimes there's games where that's included but it's not really being included in a um, in like in a, in a way that makes you like interrogate like how you interact with this in the real world mm -hmm. it's more just you know like filler background noise like you know what i'm saying there's some games that like use racism but they use it more as like window dressing whereas mm -hmm. it's a central theme to this game and i just want to challenge some people, you know what, if you're listening to this, you probably just agree with everything we say, so it doesn't matter. But <laughs> I think an interesting point is that people are okay with covering racism if there's a veil of fantasy to it or a veil of sci-fi. Oh, in oh, Mass yeah. Effect, it's okay that we talk about Korean genocide because we're not really talking about, you know, the genocide of Jewish people. We're talking about Koreans or... In Dragon Age, who can oh yeah, I can't believe everyone teaches treats the elves like that. Blah blah blah. blah. I'm elf, like, yeah, elf uh, slavery. Yeah, like elf slavery and like abuse. And, but um, it's uh, all all those ideas they're taking from what actually happened to real people in the real world, and they're applying it to elves. They're applying it to aliens. They're applying it to dwarves. Can I give David Cage a special shout out here for Detroit Become Human? Yeah, applying it to robots. Yeah. And everyone's more, com but because the robots were closer to reality, everyone's like, oh, this is stupid. This is like, bleh. But then when the more layers of fantasy you add to the exact same scenario, the more people are okay with it because in the fantasy, it's different. And I saw a tweet by a woman, and I, she was a black woman, I'm sorry, I can't remember her name, I'm so sorry, where she said, oh, dystopians are just white people saying, what if all the bad stuff happened to us? <laughs> and it's okay to like dystopian stuff. It's okay to like fantasy stuff. And I'm not saying you're a bad person for liking it. I'm just pointing it out. Like, yeah. you want to talk about it in this high fantasy thing, but when act people are actually talking about it and things, and this is actually happening to people. Like, People talk about that Black Mirror episode where social media points actually happen. And, like, yeah, that's actually happening in the real world in China where you can't get loans, you can be sent to jail because your score from social, your social score can go up and down based on people reporting you. Yeah, I think that, uh, like, a lot of, like, dystopian stuff, it's kind of like, <laughs> wait. But what if we all were poor? <laughs> you know? Yeah. And I don't... Dystopian is one of my favorite things to, like, read or watch. But, yeah, it's kind of like, you know, what if, like, like f poverty, what if, like, the way that people of color are treated, like, what if that was just... What if it was all of us? Oh, my God, what would we do? X-Men's like, what if... Everyone was treated like they were gay. No! <laughs> or original. What if white people were treated, but, like, racistly? And you're yeah. like, wait, hold on. <laughs> well, wait, wasn't... I thought X-Men, correct me if I'm wrong, was, like, also kind of written about, like, Holocaust stuff. So, the original comic books, X-Men, yeah. was... Um, Magneto was a Holocaust survivor, and Charles Xavier was a privileged white man, but was also a mutant. So yeah. they come at this issue in two different ways, and they were reflections of Malcolm X and Martin Luther King. Oh, right. But okay. white people, so... Yeah. They were... Tr Stanley... 
for the time was being very progressive, but looking back, you're like, um, <laughs> anyway, he was being progressive for the time, but not nowadays. And the Magneto was supposed to be this person of who survived trauma. So his reaction to trauma was like, they're going to do this to me again. Like, I'm so scared. My reaction is to be, go on the offensive. Mm -hmm. Well, Charles Xavier, he was born rich, but he also experienced discrimination, but through the eyes of a really privileged person. So who he can, wanted who to be, potentially do something about who it. Could, who could do something about it and didn't have that trauma. Yeah. And then the films was directed by the first three, or the first one was directed by a gay man. And he changed it a little bit to be a little more focused on what it would be like to be gay because they come out with the cure, mm -hmm. like curing us. And then, you know, Storm says, there's nothing wrong with you. There's nothing to cure. Mm -hmm. And stuff like that. And oh, yeah, because... Um, well, it was the first three films. He wanted it to be more based on, like, being yeah. gay. That does kind of remind me of... Um, you know, to bring it back to Life is Strange too, how it's like you're kind of given these different, like, trauma reactions yeah. that you can go through. Um, and some people are more open-minded to different types of trauma reactions than others. Like, Chloe has trauma. Like, she was sexually assaulted and mm -hmm. all these things. And people are... And she's abused by her stepdad. She's a sexually assaulted, abused by her stepdad... Loses her girlfriend slash best friend, you know, depending on you how you played. Um, I always felt like, oh, she says I was in love with Rachel. So I thought, like, okay. Regardless, they... she loses the person that she's most close to. How's mm -hmm. that? So she's, like, going through a lot. And people don't give her the space to say, okay, she's, like, going through a trauma response. But then Kate is going through something a little something similar. Mm -hmm. But her reaction is to be passive, so everyone's like, okay, like, you little baby, like, mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> yeah. It kind of goes back to that whole, like, perfect victim thing, mm -hmm. which, threading all of these things together, it's kind of, Life is Strange too. I feel like, does a lot to show you, like, hey, even if you play, like, you know, like, the perfect, mi the model minority, like, who never does anything wrong and just, like, tries to do everything right, like you're still gonna, like, end up with, like, all these issues because, like, sometimes life is just gonna fuck you. Um, it's not, and just to be clear, yeah, they are minorities, but also it's on top of the fact that they're homeless. So people are going to target homeless people for whatever reason. And Daniel, he acts like a little brat because he just, his dad just was murdered. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't have a home anymore, has no structure in his life. A child going through that would lose it. Like, he would, like, lose it. He would lose his mind. So it's just really sad. But I just want people to out there to realize that, first of all, I made a post, like, a year ago being like, oh, it's going to be Sub-Zero. Here are the resources. If you're, like, homeless, here are the resources that you can call. Mm -hmm. And here, like, they'll Oh, the warming stations. Yeah, the warm... I was basically being like, you can call 311 and police will come and pick you up and take you to a warm place. They're not going to do anything to you. They won't harass you. And uh, the homeless shelters are opening up and blah, blah, blah. And don't be, like, I know it's going to be really scary to go to a place designated from homeless people, but you can go. And a lot of the responses were so ignorant, and I couldn't, I was, like, getting so mad, and I was like, it's because they, like, don't know. Because some people are being so honest, it's like, oh, how's a homeless person going to see this? And I'm like, homeless people have phones. Like, yeah. Help home, because you can still have, when you go homeless, people don't take your phone away. For, and if yeah. you can't pay for your plan, you can literally still charge your phone and connect to Wi-Fi yeah. anywhere. You, I mean, and now they have Wi-Fi calling. Yeah, and they have so, Wi-Fi like, calling could, you now. Could just, you could just go to a fucking Starbucks. Yeah, or like... People can be homeless and still have paid their plan for the next three months, and just because it just happens suddenly. They 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 have prepaid. Mm -hmm. They have charging stations at the train now. Yeah, they have. So, all, and people have access to their phone, and then other people were like, "Don't be too proud to go to the homeless shelter." And I was like, "It is not because people are too proud. It's because they're scared to go. Like, what is wrong with like? Well, I can't be mad. I can't. I shouldn't be mad." But I, it's like a lot of the times it's scary to go. It's not because people are too proud. 
Well, yeah. it could be that. But I mean, yeah. I feel like people that say that, they underestimate, like, when you are on your own and vulnerable, that it can feel, like, you know, unsafe to be around lots of people. Because they know? can do whatever they want to you, and no one's going to stop them. And, like, and just, like, from the experience that I've had when I was, like, completely on my own and, like, sleeping in my car, you, I don't know, I just, you, you, I never thought to myself, I would feel safer around, like, a bunch of, like, I never once considered going to, like, a shelter I slept and froze in my car because I was like, I was like, I'm here. I can lock all the doors Mm -hmm. and like, I'm by myself. No one can like, you know, and obviously that's like a bit of a false sense of security because it's, it's a car. People can still like break in, Mm -hmm. but I felt safe. And like, also, I don't know. And you have your stuff and you're just like, you go somewhere Things can, you just, I don't know, it just, it doesn't feel. No, it, it makes sense. It makes sense. And And on top of that, there are people who actively seek out homeless people to act out all like the fucked up shit they do. Do you, I mean, okay, maybe we're old, but I remember bum fights was like this big thing on the internet. And it was so messed up because they're basically targeting people who A, are desperate, B, have no way of defending themselves against what's going on. Do you want to explain what that is for people oh, who are... Long, a long time ago, there was this really popular thing on the internet called bum fights, where they would basically pay homeless people to fight each other and, like, beat each other up and, like, pay whoever won the most. So they were, like, really desperate. It was really... Fucked up. Fucked up. And, you know, kids will target homeless people. You know what? Not even kids. Just people will target homeless youth for sex work and for just doing whatever and murder. And because this is a homeless kid or even just a homeless person, the likelihood of someone giving enough of a shit to protect them or to bring them justice is much lower. And that's why people with bad intentions seek out homeless people and just the fact that people couldn't understand that bad things were happening to two homeless kids and i was like it's got like of course Um, no one's gonna protect them remember that like that viral tweet that was going around about the two people that steal the man the homeless man's dog oh my god like the only reason anybody cared was that people said something because it was on Twitter. If that was never on Twitter, he never would have gotten his dog back. Yeah. That's literally the only reason that that happened is because, like, people, like, raised a fuss about it. You know? Do you think the police would have given a single shit if that homeless man came and said they stole my dog? And do you think that homeless man would have felt like the police would have cared about him enough to say they took my dog? The only reason they did anything is because the internet said, oh my god, why would they do that to a homeless man? The only reason that guy stole his dog is because he thought that that homeless person was less than a person and didn't deserve a dog. Yeah. Like, it's... Like, people target homeless people and think it's funny all Mm. the time. Yeah, I mean, and even when you're not talking about, like, violence... There's also people that'll just, like, fuck with you. Cause, yeah, because like, they can. Yeah, because, like, I don't know if you've ever seen, like, people will do, like, pranks yeah. on, like, homeless people, and it's just really cruel because, like, what what's this person going to do about it, you know? And that's why they target them for shit like that because, you know... No one will protect them. So... This game was a lot. Um, I do want to talk about the endings. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, because we kind of, like, touched on that a little bit earlier. Um, so the two that we watched, because we started talking about this, the two that we watched are the one where they both surrender, and then there's the one where, you know, Daniel rolls out of the car, turns himself in, and they're both, 
living separate. The other two that we didn't play was um, where they go through the border, but Daniel stays in the car, and Sean ends up getting hit by, like, shrapnel and bleeds to death after they have escaped into Mexico, and then Daniel grows up by himself, and we get this, like, very, like, dark... I was very moved by it because it's this very dark ending where he's, like, by himself, he's at... He's, like, all alone, looks very angry, and he, like, these three, you know, like, gang members, I would assume, come to, like, do something bad. Just fuck with them. Fuck with him. They've got weapons. And, you know, Daniel kind of fucks them up. And then, and the part that, like, really, like, creeped me out is where he makes the guy, like, point the gun under his own chin. Mm -hmm. And then he just decides, like, huh, you're not worth my time. And just, like, walks away. And it's dark. Yeah, and you, I, and it's, and I can understand it. You know, I, like, if I was him, I would be that angry. Too. And because the the thing that they show like right before those guys come to him is he's at a uh, candlelit he has a little altar set up for Sean mm-hmm. with like his eye patch and some other things and it's just really like really sad and I wasn't even I felt like I saw the the origin story of a supervillain you know mm-hmm. yeah that's what it felt like and then there's arguably the best ending no i genuinely think it was the best ending on purpose because the only life that they could have had the best life that they that society would let them have was just embracing what they needed to do to survive yeah so which was both of them in mexico together happy mm -hmm. yeah but i just want to talk about like what leads what gets them to that point though because that's when Sean tells Daniel get out of the get out of the car. Daniel gets out of the car and literally just freaking kills everybody mm-hmm. and like blows through the gate. I don't. Th- I think he tried not to kill people, but I mean, I'm going to headcanon that everyone was just slightly injured. I mean, I don't know. Something about the look on his face led me to believe that he at least believes that that's what he did Mm -hmm. because he looks very, like, hardened in that specific moment Mm -hmm. as they drive through and they're seeing all the bodies on the ground. Mm -hmm. And then um, fast forward six years to them. They own a garage together. Mm -hmm. And then um, Sean is, you know, like, with one of the cars and these, like, three guys come to, like, take money and rob them maybe. Mm -hmm. We're not exactly sure. Um, but Daniel protects him. He doesn't, he does this, like, Darth Vader thing where he, like, lifts one of the guys off, like, the ground, and the guy's like, "Ah!" Mm -hmm. Um, then they run away, and we see that they have, like, a whole safe full of money, and then they go sit on the beach, and they're just, you know, like, cheers. Now we're just chilling. And you know how we know that this is the best ending? Because, don't nod, they're French, right? Mm -hmm. And what is Sean doing in the very final scene of this? What is he doing? He's smoking. Oh, okay. That's it. <laughs> and so, as soon as I saw that, I was like, I was like, oh my god, that's so French. Oh, so I think it's interesting that in the two endings where Daniel is in the United States, he's like a doing the origins of a superhero. He saved a bus from drowning or whatever the fuck. And my mind, you know, I feel like in a different time, I'd be like, yay, he's saving people. And this, I'm like, fuck those kids. Fuck those kids. I'm like, get out of here, man. Mm-hmm. I don't give a shit. She'd be in Mexico starting gang wars. I don't fucking care <laughs> about any of these dumbass kids. <laughs> because in my mind, even though I logically it's best to save children, <laughs> why should he save kids from a society that hasn't given him shit and will never give him anything and will never appreciate him? Even though that's what a hero does and it's like, realistically, well, no, fuck off, you know? It's also not the kid's fault that society is that way. Yeah, I know, but still, I'm like, fuck those kids. Yeah. And then in when they're in Mexico, it implies that they do gang stuff, but I'm like, what if he's just been defending his money. What if he saved a bunch of puppies? Yeah. They're innocent. Well, first of all, we're trusting the media here. Yeah. <laughs> so I just, I think the best ending is fuck the police. You know? Yeah. Just fuck the police. You never, 
I guess I feel the same anger as Sean and Daniel would be like, they never did anything for us. They never <clears throat> protected us. They never believed us. Why should I live by the rules that do nothing but fuck us over? Oh, you know what I just realized? So we're, we're the footage that we're watching right now, Sean looks at the book of cars on the table and he's like, I'm not that really that into cars. And then they go start a garage, like their dad. Yeah, well, I think one of his plans was dad owns some property there and he could learn how to fix cars mm -hmm. on his own. And also could Daniel could go rob things with his superpowers. Yeah, and, and, of course. But really, <laughs> the idea, like... Sean's like, oh, yeah, I'm running the business. And Daniel's like, mm-hmm, well, I'm going to go steal yeah. <laughs> so we can pay the bills. Yeah, man, but that, like, that ending where Daniel ends up alone, because, like, he's, like, literally a kid and, like, watches, like, Sean bleed to death. And in the... that's why he bleached his hair. No one was around to tell him that was a bad idea. That's the real, like, that's when I really knew, oh, man, he is alone. No one told him that that looked bad. Mm-hmm. Stacy thinks it looks good. She's wrong. Yeah. Is she wrong? That does not look good. But I was like, I was like a tween when that was like really popular. So I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm like, yeah, like that's cool. Why it's not? not. <laughs> Death. Um, it's not. Yeah. He's got like the tattoos. He looks like a member of NSYNC. He's wearing a tank top. Brett. No. Yeah, Absolutely but that's, not. that's the problem. I never got into boy bands. I don't know why. <sighs> I was only into Spice Girls, and that's it. And TLC. Mm. And Destiny's Child. I never got into boy... I don't know why. I just never... Yeah, you know what it is? Well, I, for me at least, I, I was into girl bands, but I always... And I've actually learned this because of like now when I watch K-pop... I tend to gravitate more towards boy bands than girl bands, and I've realized that it's because when I see you want to have sex with them. When I no, no when okay. I see girl bands, like I don't relate to that like image of femininity. Oh, okay. So like even the Spice Girls, who I loved, like I saw them wearing like short skirts, platform shoes. Well, that's sporty Spice and Scary Spice. <sighs> scary Spice still wore short skirts. They, she but was, she was scary about it. That's true. She was my favorite. <laughs> so My favorite was Ginger. But, like, they all had, like, long hair. You know, yeah, and, true. And, like, it, it, like it's the, the difference, I think, is even more distinct with K-pop, where, like, they're definitely very, like, feminine. Oh, yeah. And the boy bands are medium feminine. Yeah. And, like, I, I like the androgyny. Uh, a lot, I think. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Is that why you were always attracted to the ugly Backstreet Boy? Yeah, the one that was old and balding. That was your favorite one. No. Yeah, None of them had, were old and balding. The one, he, he had a hairline, he had a receding hairline. He did. He had a receding hairline. Are you talking hairline. about? The old one. No. Kevin has a full head of hair. I, I, my image I of him when I, I was a child was that's the old one. I don't think you're talking about the actual old one. I think you're talking about Brian. And I don't know their name. And he's not the old one. Side, side hold note. on. Hold on. No, just look up Backstreet Boys and, I, and you tell me which one it is. Which one? This, no, hold on. I need to look at original. Backstreet. Yeah. <laughs> can't tell I don't know <laughs> you don't know which one it is wait Th that's I, a newer picture I cannot picture. identify just just look up like 2000 or something like put 2000 in there because 90s hold <laughs> on I feel like this is too old school I, I can't I can't I gotta see closer this one. Oh, he's that's not the one you like he's not the oldest one how wait no but he I hated him yeah no, but I like him. I like him. What's I like him name? because he looks like a trashy scumbag, and well, that's my is, type. What's his name? AJ. Well, <laughs> unfortunate. He's but he's the he's the bad boy. You know that I always like the bad boy. I was not attracted to any of them. I don't know why. I just I, wasn't. And my, I was not attracted to Insync. I, I was not attracted to Insync either. I wasn't into Insync as much. Like, first of all, I always was like, why is everyone into Justin Timberlake? His hair looks like ramen noodles. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't get it. I didn't understand it. I didn't, 
Not well, to because, like body shame or whatever. No, no, the no. Backstreet no. Boys. Because when they the the classic formula is that you have the lead singer who's mm-hmm. the baby face, and okay. they have the high voice, and they do all the lead singing. So they're supposed to be like the cute one. Okay. Not hot, but like literally cute. So Nick Carter was that for the Backstreet Boys, who's the blonde one. Okay. So, and then Justin Timberlake was that for NSYNC. I think I've never been attracted to anyone in any boy band. Is that that's, no, it's not weird. That, okay. I feel like everyone's like, ah, I, I wonder I if know. you would, hon, like, see if you, like, what you think of them now. Take, take away 90s. Oh, maybe, yeah, maybe it's that because, I'm seeing teenagers and yeah. I'm like, what? So, like, if you look at them in one of these. Because, uh, like. I think it's that they look too perfect, and that's weird to me. And you I, know what? That's the problem that I have with what's his face from the boys. Oh, the perfect man. Yeah, because when I saw pictures of the actor when he's like all scruffed up, I was like, oh, he's hot. But on the show, he's way too like all American. Like there's a sh- there's a show called The Boys on Amazon. Uh, <laughs> We're it's really amazing. going. It's off. amazing. First of all, no, because you were like mad that. What's his face? Homelander. Blank, blank land. Big blank man in your life um, was attracted, and I was attracted. Oh, yes. You were like, I don't think he's attractive. And I was like, okay. <laughs> but I didn't think he was attractive until after I found out he was a freak. And then I was like, I can get down with this. Because mm. at first I was like, I don't have any feelings. So they're like, he's the only one that, that doesn't have any problems. He's perfect. I'm like, ew, gross. Like, mm-hmm. normal? But then I found out he was a complete weirdo, and I was like, yeah, I can get down with yeah. that being that crazy man. Because <laughs> they're like, no, actually, this is his thing. And I'm like, that's real weird. I like it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, yeah, I think it's that they're too perfect looking, and it's I, I find it unnerving. Click this picture. Hold, hold, yeah. Wait a second. Welcome to the... Backstreet Boys <laughs> podcast. I'm sorry. I think this boy's cute. I don't. No, I'm not into it. I'm no. sorry. Well, they're all like, they're like in their 40s now. I, I no, 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 no. But I'm saying like, you know what? I, but because it's like I look at them. And, and by I, the way, I don't think my opinion validates if they're attractive or not. That's just what I'm into. Yeah. Well, we try to we try to clarify about this that like you're tr- so you're you you the person your attraction to someone does not validate their existence as a sexual being. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> I'm just saying that I think they look too perfect, and that is not something my body responds to. That's how I. That's how my attraction is like very clearly with women. Mm-hmm. I can tolerate, like I can tolerate. <laughs> I can tolerate perfection in men. But for some reason in women, when they're too, like, I don't know. I like them to look a little rougher on the edges. I'm like, give me some tattoos, some piercings, like, maybe some, like, overly tweezed eyebrows. I don't know. put those dudes in some sweatpants (laughs) and some gamer grease, you know, a little gamer grime. I'm like, yeah, 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 Yeah. I I like that. Grub them up a little bit. Grub them up a little, you know. So video game controller in their hand and some Doritos. But back back to Life is Strange too. (laughs) <laughs> um. So, I really liked this game. I want more people to, especially now that all the episodes are out, because I know that sometimes people hesitate to like get mm-hmm. into episodic things until the ep- all the episodes are out. Um, now that they're all out, I think that this like, go play it. Yeah, I know? remember my emotions for the first episode were so intense because it was so realistic to me not for being latin american but for being you know having no home and i was like oh my god this is oh the first episode yeah i thought you meant the first game and i was like what what no (laughs) i don't have time powers (laughs) um so if you ever struggled with having a home or whatever just you know would be aware that you might uh be triggered not that you would be listening to a spoiler cast if you haven't played this, but, you know. Yeah. I just want to give credit to the fact that it completely emotionally destroyed me on a deep level. I had to take a nap. 
Because that was how intense it was. Well, I think that, you know, there are sometimes people who, like, will watch us play through something, and then they'll go get it for themselves and play it, Mm -hmm. because sometimes there is, at least for me, there can be a different experience to it when you're, like, actually playing it yourself versus, like, when I'm watching a Let's Play, Mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Um... Especially because you're feeling like you made the choice and therefore everything, every bad thing that happens to these poor children is your fault. But really, you can actually leave shitty comments on our YouTube channel <laughs> saying that we're morally deficient for playing the video game wrong. Mm-hmm. So really, who is the who's one the, coming out on top who's now? Who's the real bad guy? Who's the real bad guy? Society or these two women playing video games on the internet? Mm-hmm. It's us. It's me. I did it. Yeah. Please send. Please d- send me a message on Tumblr, anonymous, please, so you can really tell me how you feel. <laughs> um, um, did you have any more thoughts? Um, uh, that's it. I think I'm gonna think of something ten minutes from now. But right now, I have nothing. Oh, yeah. Well, luckily, we oh, we will... gotta talk about this thing. I'm getting there. Okay. Let me tee it up. So, uh, I are you gonna post this tomorrow? Probably. Yes. Okay. So. Uh, a week from today, which is Janu- January 28th for us, mm-hmm. uh, Tuesday, January 28th, we are doing something special for Life is Strange 2 on Twitch, twitch.tv slash geekremix. The time will most likely be 11 a.m. U.S. Central, but which... It could possibly... But it could possibly be 10 a.m. U.S. Central. We will be posting more about it so please keep an eye out for the exact time i think we should tell them what it is now i think it's safe okay we're gonna be interviewing the developers for life is strange yeah i think it's safe to start saying it yeah so three i think of the developers for life is strange 2 are going to be joining us on twitch Mm -hmm. to talk about developing the game um you will be able to we will be facilitating but you'll be able to like put questions in the chat Mm -hmm. chat will be follower only so and it will have a so if you follow right when it happens you won't be able to uh chat use the chat because i want it to be safe so i'm gonna have so you can have it so like you have to be a follower for x amount of time before you can Mm -hmm. send any messages or anything so that's what i'm going to be doing not going to say what the amount of time is going to be so i would say the earlier you follow the better Simply because I'm only doing this because sometimes people can be dickheads and I just don't want any bad words or any, like, whatever yeah. in the chat. But I also want to give the opportunity for fans to be able to directly ask questions that they want to know. Yeah. I don't think that they'll be able to actually see the chat. Still. But, but yeah, but that way we don't, like, I also just, you know, that way other people who are in the chat don't have to deal with, like, assholes coming in and, like... Yeah. Doing whatever. Doing yeah. whatever, because it's like, remember, the, there's been a couple times where it's like, pe- like especially... There's been times where I'm doing charity streams and someone DDoS'd me. I was like... Cool. What? Thanks. Why? Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. Um, or like times when we're like playing a game live on release and like people will run around putting spoilers in the chat, which is always fun. So... But the spoilers never make any sense, so I don't care. (laughs) I know. That's the funny part. And, like... They spoiled the Stranding, but I had no idea what any of what they were saying meant. Well... And even with the context, I was like, that was not a spoiler. (laughs) Yeah. I feel like the thing that they said, I was like, that's not exactly... That's not exactly, like, a... Because... Well, anyway, that's a side point. Follow the Twitch so that you can chat. Um... We'll make sure to post announcements on social media once, like, the time is, like, 100% confirmed. Mm -hmm. Um, In the meantime, if you have questions that you would like to, uh, that you would like us to ask the developers, or if you have topics that you want us to bring up, please leave them in a comment on this, um, and we'll, you know, collect some of them. So, we're really excited and... Thankful for the opportunity, but also kind of nervous because 
Yeah. Yeah. Everyone thinks that, like, we're friends, but really they sometimes say hi and then we get nervous and don't say anything. Yeah. It, you know, it's funny because, like, I'm mutuals with a bunch of them on Twitter and on Instagram. Same. And still, like... I don't know. I am just like, oh, okay. And then, like, <laughs> a couple, like, one of them, like will send me messages like once like one time one of them was like coming to chicago and they like asked me some questions about chicago and i was like yeah i don't know (laughs) you're like so much cooler (laughs) they said happy new year and i was like hi yeah yeah (laughs) so yeah so never think that we're ever gonna have chill yeah ever well because you know why it's because I, for the most part, I, like, just forget about the fact that there's people that I'm mutuals with that I think of as being so much cooler than me, mm-hmm. and then when they actually interact with me, I'm like, God damn it! Like, or, like, when I post a tweet about my farts and someone important likes, and I'm like, oh my god. Yeah. Why? I forget that, like, I exist. <laughs> Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. That other people perceive me. <laughs> that you're a fart sexual being? Yeah. I don't... Anyway, goodbye. Bye. That was life is strange. Thank you. <laughs> goodbye. <laughs>